Welcome to Little Birdie Podcast. It's the 149th edition of the Open Championship at Royal St. George's up in Scotland. I'm your host, Scoot, and I'm joined in studio with MG. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, Nico. Looking forward to this one. British Open's always a good cracker. It's, uh, it's been Matsuyama, Mickelson, Rahm. Who's going to be uh, the, the final major winner for the season? It's been a fantastic year of golf, and maybe because of COVID, it's, uh, it's been nice to have something extra on TV to bet on. Yeah, just what we need. <laughs> more, sp- more sport. We're, uh, we've been stacked the last couple of weeks, and uh, this is the last of the majors. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, hearing what the uh, three golf experts got a couple of uh, whispers around. So I just need some uh, verification before I invest. We've got uh, Top Rope Tedeschi, we've got Mike Dogger Caridi, we've got Big Daddy Adam Fraser, and we've also got uh, a special guest, Scott Hend, who we're going to cross to. Uh, he's an Aussie on tour, if you haven't heard of him. He's won 15 golf tournaments already, and he's a three time winner on the European tour, and we're lucky to have him on the show. So a big welcome to you, Scott Hend. I'm good, thanks, mate. Yourself? Fantastic. Thanks, Scott. Uh, something that caught my eye last week was uh, the Scottish. Open something that uh, happened to Rory McIlroy. We had a fan grab his club out of the bag and take off with it, and he just stood there swinging the club. Is that something that's ever happened to you? No, no, no. <laughs> Usually they, they don't have to walk over to my bag because if they follow me around, they can just go and grab one out of the rough after I throw it. <laughs> Must be uh, disappointing not to be out there. You did play really well last week, uh, an eight under, ten shots off uh, the lead there. Yeah, it would have been great to um, go out, but. Uh... We had a bit of few issues here with the, the trying to go do the final qualifying with contact tracing through the UK. So a few of us couldn't go to the qualifying and we pretty much only had the spots available in the tournaments to get in, like uh, Lucas got in and then obviously Minwu and then maybe maybe Wade might even get a start this week from one of those spots instead of the Monday qualifier. But if you don't play well enough, you don't get a start. That's pretty much how it goes. How have you navigated COVID over the last 12 to 18 months? Well, my, yeah, my form has been pretty poor. I've, I've sort of struggled with the bubble life with uh, playing tournaments, but, you know, I can't complain. I'm still out there playing golf. I've still got the freedom of movement, so to speak, with, with travelling around, unlike a few other people. So it, it's been difficult, but uh, I'm still playing. I mean, that's, that's the main thing. When you first tee off of a major tournament, uh, how are the nerves? Is, uh, is that something that you've learned to cope with over years of experience? No, I get nervous, I, 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 but I love that feeling. I mean, the, the day that I don't get nervous is the day that I shouldn't be playing anymore. I, I get nervous when I go to my home golf club. I get nervous when I tee it up for the boys. <laughs> it's just, you know, you just wonder whether you're going to snap hook the first one or push cut it or whatever you're going to do. It's just, just, it's just a great feeling to have. Of the Aussies, uh, Cam Davis won recently. Who uh, of the Aussies this time around, given the conditions, is best suited here? Um, my... Dark horse in the Australian guys. I think Jason Scribner is going to go pretty good this week because he's he's been working towards a lot of good good results. His consistency has been fantastic, and I just think he's uh he's, he seems to be maturing into a really solid solid golfer. And uh, I'd see Scrib being a bit of a dark horse. I mean, obviously Cam and Leash and and Scotty and Jason and, and all those guys. And they, I mean, even Lucas, so to speak, could be up there, should be up there. But I think uh, Jason Scribner is going to be a bit of the dark horse that people won't really be thinking about. You're a big bomber, uh, so am I. I'm joking there. But uh, who's best suited on, on this uh, Royal St. George's? Is it a big bomber's deck? I'm not sure the bombers are going to be that pleased with it. I've heard the rough is quite juicy and the, and, and the course is in fantastic condition, but the rough is going to be quite quite penalising, so... It's going to have to be a mixture of accuracy and and a bit of power. So, you know, you've got to look for the golfer that can keep it on the planet instead of whipping it in the rough all the time. You start whipping it in the rough around there, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Of uh, of your mates on the European tour, who do you think is most suited out here this weekend? Oh, in Europe, I think Tommy Tommy Fleetwood hasn't shown too much great form this year, but I wouldn't be surprised if he pops up. He, he's he's grown up on a Linksy type golf courses. I think he'll be he'll be thereabouts. Why do you think uh, the top five or ten players seem to figure in the finish uh, of these majors? Is it a belief thing? Is it the way the courses have laid out? What's the what's the answer here to these majors? It's just a different style of golf course, and 
and as it's been said before by you know a lot of the top top players that are successful in these tournaments is you don't have to necessarily be there on the on day one. It's more about making sure you hang in there and then and fighting through the conditions of the week where 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 you get wind, you get rain, and seeing how the golf course plays out. And then when they're there on come Sunday, they're just right in the mix. They they just know how to hang around and be be there when it's when it counts on the last day. So a mixture of uh, less errors and uh, self belief. Oh, for sure. Just keep the double bogeys off the card and, and 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 try and keep yourself out of the major trouble. And all of a sudden, come Sunday, if, if the conditions are right and all the stars align, you you end up winning a tournament. You're not playing in the tournament, but will you be watching it, or do you try and just take a break completely from golf? Will it be on the TV or not? If there's a if there's a couple of Aussies up the top there, I like to watch it. I mean, I always love to see an Australian win. If I if I can't win myself, I always want an Australian to win a tournament. That's just just the way I am. I, I love seeing the Aussies doing great. Uh, if I'm not out playing golf, I'll, I'll probably be here having a bit of a bit of a peep at it, seeing what's going on. I mean, obviously there's F1 on this weekend as well, so that'll take precedence over the golf. <laughs> but uh, hopefully an Australian gets up there. Tell us about uh, your show, Headless with Hendy. Oh, mate, three-putting, losing golf balls and everything <laughs> else gets me headless. When will we see you back in Australia? Well, can you get back in? Oh, that's, mate, that's pretty much up to the Australian government, I think. Uh, you know, making the restrictions and, and and stuff to get back into Australia as hard as they have. Uh, I'm, I'm not prepared to come back and spend 14 days in a hotel room and, and take two weeks out of my calendar. You know, if you're going to go back to, to Australia, you need to go back for – an extended period of time, especially if you're going to sit in a hotel for two weeks before you get to see anybody. And um, I don't know. Uh, we were sort of hoping they might make some sort of exemption for the golf tournaments coming up later in the year. I've, I've been fully vaccinated and I'm, I get tested every week. So I've had 87 PCR tests and we wow. actually keep cracking on with them. So, <laughs> you know, it's not like us golf pros sort of just show up to a golf tournament and go, oh, yeah, let's just play golf. I mean, we also go through all the – yeah, the uh, medical precautions and stuff, and and that's just totally up to the Australian government whether they decide they're going to let us in or not. Are you tested uh, round by round? Mate, some weeks we, some weeks you get four tests. Just depends on whether you're travelling into an event and what the government regulations are in a country, and, and that's just the way. It's, just keep adding up. I'm I'm getting ready to raise the bat in a couple of weeks for the hundred, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm surprised that uh, to hear that you've kept count. It's hard to know when the madness will end, isn't it? Yeah, I sort of sort of feel for a guy like Brad Kennedy who's been in and out of the country a bit and he's had to do a fair few of these quarantine things. Mm. And um, Did I see right he's actually playing this week in the Open as well? Yeah, it's causing uh, all sorts of drama in the AFL and NRL. I see that uh, John Rahm managed to fight COVID off to come and uh, win the US Open. And of the Americans, who do you think's best suited here? Oh, well... I mean, once again, you look at a guy like Dustin Johnson has hasn't produced really great results so far this year, but he would be a guy that you think after winning a US Open, if you can get his head in the right in the right place, you can't really write him off either. I mean, he's he's proved that he can win on tough golf courses and he can overpower courses. It just just all depends on whether he can get his head in the right spot. Your next start is in uh, Celtic Manor. Yeah, on the twenty twenty golf course up in Wales. Uh, Hopefully it doesn't rain and it's not windy, but that pretty much is a given it's going to be doing that when we get to Wales. It's, a very, it's usually a very windy, cold place when we play golf there, but it's a great golf course, so it should be fun. I'll be uh, definitely following in Scotty here with Tommy Fleetwood. I think he's a good little roughy. He was really good in the tournament uh, last year, and I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you in Melbourne for a beer soon when you can come back to Australia. Yeah, no worries, guys. You get a bottle of wine out. I won't be on the beers. We'll be on the wines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we drink a lot of that too, so we can't wait to see you. And now it's time to take a break. Up next, we've got Mike Dogger Caridi to take a closer look at the course and first round leaders. If you're having a bet on the golf this week, make sure you check out topsport.com.au. They'll be betting live in play throughout the tournament. So if you miss the off and miss uh, the early betting, you can still bet up to the final round. So check out topsport.com.au. Up next, we've got Mike Caridi. Welcome back to the Open Championship Special Edition, and it's time to talk to Mike Dogger Caridi. Mark and I are in studio, but uh, we've got Dogger on the line. He's down on the Bellarine Peninsula enjoying a couple of little uh, whacks of golf down there. How are you, Dogger? 
Very well, thanks, mate. Very well. <laughs> Not too much them? golf, obviously, doing some work as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just put you in it. How, uh, how are you hitting them, all right? Hitting them okay. Been reworking the swing down at Albert Park with uh, oh, Baden Shaft. It's messy. been uh, starting again, so that's been a bit of hard work, but it's been good. <laughs> Outstanding. Uh, the golf this week is at Royal St George's, and we know that uh, you're our layout and our course expert, so uh, give us some insights on how it's likely to play this week and uh, what are the little uh, tricks to uh, unpacking this one? Yeah, for sure. So Royal St George's this week, haven't been there since 2011. Uh, so they've done a bit of work since then. I, I saw an interview with the course super this week. Uh, they basically wanted to get the course back to a, a rolling sort of um, dune land scenario. So effectively what they did was killed off a lot of road grass and, and got the fescue back. So uh, they lost about, I think he said, something like 60% of the greens at some point. So the members weren't too wrapped with him. But um, <laughs> that's all come back and he said the course is looking better than ever, which is great. Uh, it's going to be a link style course, as you expect, for, for an open championship. It's right on the coast, so it's down the south east coast so down towards uh sort of across the, the water from um belgium and france and uh it's going to be it's going to be windy but not silly windy it's going to be uh it's going to be one of those courses where you're going to need to plot your way around it's not going to be super long but uh you're going to want to be in the fairway they've grown up that second cut uh so if you can sort of stay in the fairway and really hit your, hit your spots you're going to be in a really good position because um you can't be you can't be in the wrong part of the fairway um, because when you're hitting into some of these greens, it's just going to give you no shot. Uh, and then if you've got no shot into the greens, you're going to be looking at two and three punting from there. Mm. And uh, one of your specialties is the first round leader. So we might see what uh, your insights are now that tee times have been set. But looking at the odds, courtesy of Top Sports, usually uh, focused around the outright winner market with a couple of uh, players turned off but uh ram $17 kepka 29 space similar quote thomas mcelroy then $34 you got dj shufle uh deshambos on the $41 mark with morikawa westwood usazen uh fitzpatrick cantlay and so on but uh you usually go value hunting here but who's going to be most suited is it uh the players off early or, or later in the day yeah, good question. It's, it's certainly the first thing you look at in an open championship because you can quite often get a bad side of the draw. Uh, if you cop, say, someone who's looking at a, a Thursday afternoon and it's quite windy and ugly, uh, they can go pear-shaped and then they might not get the return favours on, on the Friday. So had a look at the wind and, and what you're kind of expecting is it's not going to be super, super different from morning to afternoon. Um with the open, they tee off only off the first, so there's no there's no back tee time, so there's no one's off ten, and they're all off so in a row. So you're teeing off from seven o'clock in the morning all the way through to three thirty four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, the wind just looks like it's going to be pretty steady all day. You know, twenty five k's an hour, gusting up a little bit, but but it doesn't look like it's going to be too too favoursome. So I'm sort of more concentrating on people that play well in the first round more than I'm worrying about the weather at this at this time. Mm, fascinating insight there. Who, uh, who have you settled on for your uh, your best roughies? Yeah, best roughies, yeah. Like you said, if, if I wanted to go for someone who shoots well in the in the first round and is <laughs> in absolute scary form, it'd be John Rahm, but I'd probably steer away from him because in a first round, you're normally going to get a split pot, so you're probably better off going for odds. Uh, the four that I'm going to go with, uh, Cantlay's around 40s, Scheffler's 50s, uh, Cam Smith is a, is a sneaky one. He's out in the afternoon, but but he um, he's tends to sort of find it early um, pretty well. And probably the bigger one at odds who's out early in the morning is um, Alex Noren at about 80 to 1. Okay, and Alex Noren. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, Cam Smith has uh, been in pretty good form of late. Is, uh, is he the best of the Aussies to not only uh, take out the first round leader, but is he, is he the best of the Aussies to win the entire tournament? Yeah, look, I think it's the same where we talk about each each time we come around to these majors. You look at guys like uh, Leash and, and Cam Smith. They're in super foot form and they and they like playing in the wind. So you would think that this course is going to set up well for them, probably especially Leash. Um, for me, again, it's one of those ones. If you're gonna if you're gonna bet around that bottom end of the market, they're the two. You you'd obviously go with the two faves. Uh, if you wanted to go someone a little bit outside that, you'd be looking next step up. Obviously, is uh, Lucas Herbert, who's played really well um, in the last couple of weeks, with including a win in Europe and Minwoo Lee. But I'd probably be hunting somewhere in the middle and go with um, Matty Jones. So Matt Jones kind of ticks both bases and has a good price for me as well. 
Sounds like you're going to the field each way in the Aussies. Uh, <laughs> it's not one market. It's a market that I don't normally hang around. But uh, yeah, and when I if I do, I'd rather pick someone at, at a bit better odds and and try and get some money back. Okay, so uh, out of uh, the outright market, we've got John Rahm, 9.25, Kepka, 16, Shafley, 18, Spieth, 19, 21 for Thomas, a couple of players there at 22, DJ and Rory, and then we start to head to around the 29 and 30, 41 mark. Who's your, who's the best? Who's your top pick of uh, the runners inside the market there, Dogger? Yeah, so in, inside the market... My honest answer is my best pick is the favourite, but I just I can't back him. Um, I can't back John Rahm at that price in a 130 horse field. So I'm going to go back to the well with Xander. Um, oh, he, no. he hasn't won in a while, but oh. uh, he just sets up perfectly for this sort of course again. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm crossing my fingers. Jeez, Nico oh, Nico dear. hasn't uh, recovered from the last major when he uh, had Shuffle for. He had uh, so many top, chances. Top three, top five, top ten. It was similar yep. to Brooks in the PGA. It was Brooks lost it. Lefty was yeah. really really strong, but wow, God, yeah, Xander Brooks had strong. so many opportunities to win that tournament. And I just I've got no hair left. I've just pulled it all out. I can't believe it, Dogger. You you deflect oh, into the, you the dark can, side. You can see my hair. But I'm getting a lot. So. But uh, yeah. look, yeah, there's a few there that are certainly right around it. Cantlay, uh, Reed, uh, Morikawa is one that I'm really surprised. I think a lot of people are frightened off by the fact that he just hasn't got any sort of form in Europe and links courses. And he, he came out this morning and said he struggled a bit last week hitting his irons through the turf, the harder turf than he sees in the US. Of course, will be a little bit softer. I'm expecting him to play pretty well, but I've seen him shopping up around 40 to 1. So, um, But look, if I'm going to pick one, it'll be Xander. Mm, it's going to be interesting to see how a few of the Americans go. I, I know Kepka's come out and, and said that it's not his favourite deck either. Um, there's a couple of other people. A couple other people are starting to come up with Mickelson, and I remember that Mickelson has been in the hunt in a, in a few Open Championships, and I don't think he he minds the 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 windy conditions, Phil. No, definitely. He's once upon a time you, you would steer right away from the Americans because they just didn't know how to handle it, and I think. Probably Phil was one of those ones that cottoned on, you know, mid-career for him that he sort of started heading over the Scottish Open and playing and really getting a feel for it. And it's proven for him that he's he's enjoying it and they're starting to understand it a bit better because in, in the US you can fire at pins. The greens are a bit softer, they'll settle. But here you really have to play it on the ground. You, you really need to make sure you're hitting your spots and the ball's going to funnel and bounce to where it, it's going to. And, and if you're not playing for that and you're just firing at flags, it's just not going to work. What about the uh, more local lads, McElroy and uh, Hatton? What do you think of their chances? Yeah, look, I think Hatton's a lot of people's tip and I, I can't argue with it. He's he's absolutely a good fit for this course and playing well. Um, Rory's one of those ones that I think he's a bit like, I won't say he's a bit like Tom Melbourne, but he's, he's a, a <laughs> lot of like, he just... He just seems to not be able to get it done. And and yeah. I was talking about him to someone yesterday. And whenever I think him now at the Open, I think of his first tee shot at Portrush last time around. And uh, all the pressure was on him because it was, it was his hometown. But um, he absolutely capitulated on that first. I think he ran up an eight on the first and it was almost out of yeah. a, a, out from there. So look, I, I can't have Rory, um, but yeah. I know that there'll be, there'll be people that'll be loving him because he's, he's back in Europe. Yeah. Cricket score odds roughies. Who are the absolute bolters that we can just have ten or twenty bucks on to uh, to scoop the pool? Uh, probably the one that I can see down around two hundred to one on the markets. Keegan Bradley. Uh, he sets up like with his stats. He sets up reasonably well here. His form in the open hasn't been super for the last few times around, but 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 earlier than that, he has been pretty good. And I think over the last twelve months, he's probably found a bit bit of form that he hasn't had in the last few years. So I could see him, I could see him playing pretty well this week. And then hard in the market, who's the the pick of the lay? Is he, you sort of, you couldn't lay John Rahm, but outside of John Rahm, is there anyone that you're happy to put a line through? Yeah, I think I've got a funny feeling that that that. Uh, Big Daddy and Top Rope might have the same one as me, but <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say Bryson. I, I think a lot of people are potting him. I I don't see him as the sort of character as someone that's going to be able to play that strategic links game. I, I think he's going to want to have driver, which is fine because that's his strength and he hits the ball a long way. And there's probably going to be two or three holes that he could probably have a crack at driving uh, on par fours. But I'm just 
I don't think that the upside's there all the time, and I think that he can get himself in some poor positions, and I, I think he's probably one I won't be betting at all. I won't go near, near him. Outstanding stuff. So uh, the first round, there's going to be no real edge on the early or late groups, but uh, just to zip through the summary of Dogger's Best, he thinks John Rum's the uh, the man to beat, but he's too short. Uh, he's He likes Xander, Cantlay, Reed, and Morikawa. If you're uh, looking for someone to beat John Rum, Keegan Bradley's the absolute bolter at 200s. He's going to lay Bryson DeChambeau in his first round leader markets, which is uh, his specialty. This is where he picks off the book. He's here is Cantlay at 40, Scheffler at 50s, Cam Smith at 70s, and Alex Noren at 126. So I'll definitely be following him in there on the first round leader. And if you like the Aussies, he thinks that Leishman and Cam Smith are chances along with uh, Herbert and Jones. But as he said, he's not really uh, one to dabble in the uh, the Aussie-type markets. But, uh, Dogger, I'll let you get back to uh, that uh, swing reconstruction. <laughs> that sounds absolutely messy, mate. <laughs> it's, uh, he's got a lot of work on his hands, has Baden. So he's... he's uh... <laughs> He's seeing me pretty much every fortnight at the minute, so I'm due to get back in there next week. Don't don't buy it, Nico. One of the great hustlers on the golf course. Oh, out of your mouth. He, oh, yeah. he, he runs Are most you? of it. He ra- runs most of it at golf tournaments. <laughs> Somehow does his handicap, and I'm always out uh, inside him and the handicaps, and uh, he wins more than he loses. Don't worry about that. Sensational stuff. Thanks for joining us again, Dogger. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. If you're having a bet this weekend on the golf, make sure you check out Top Sports Markets. They've been in the game for 30 years up on the Gold Coast. They've got uh, a heap of different player props, and they bet in the run too. So it's starting to get down to the wire on the last day. You can uh, even get a bet on in the live action there. We're going to take a break, and then uh, we're going to get Fraze and Top Rope Tadeshi to run through their top picks. Welcome back to Little Birdie Podcast, our Open Championship edition. I'm in the studio with MG, but now it's time to talk golf with Fraze and Top Rope Tedeschi. Top Rope Tedeschi's been smashing around ladies' tournaments. He uh, he hasn't stopped betting golf every week. He is so sick. I know you guys both uh, love the golf week in, week out, but uh, appreciate your time doing the majors for us. And uh, let's get straight into it. We haven't had a good look at uh, the outright market yet, so I'll just read the chances from top to bottom here. And no surprise, John Rahm, 925 favourite. Brooks Kepka. he's uh, he said that he doesn't like the deck. He's $16. Xander, $18. Jordan Spieth, 19 JT, $21. Dustin Johnson, $22. Rory's around that same quote. Bryson, $29. Morikawa, $29. And you get much, much better than the rest. So it's more, more or less or not, it's uh, Ram or uh, get any like a good price for any other runner if you're keen. But uh, we might start with you, Big Daddy. Of those in the market, or John Ra, maybe we'll talk about him first. Uh, back him or lame at that quote? Uh, I need I need twelve dollars to be on him. Um, I, I do definitely want to have a saver on him though, because uh, he's he's the hottest player in the world right now, uh, and he's playing it's just so good. So he's he's not a player that um, I'm really keen to take at that price, but I definitely want to have just a small save room to try and maybe get a mistake back. Uh, he, The only thing that concerns me with John Rahm is the British Open's a little bit different style of betting tournament to most other betting tournaments we have. It can... Guys that... I'll give you an example. Someone like Rory McIlroy, who has been a little bit out of form recently in recent years... Um, can pop up and, and regularly play well in the British Open because it's a totally different style of golf. So, bar last year, he missed a cut, but before that at Carnoustie, he had tied second, Royal Birkdale tied fourth, Royal Troon tied fifth, won Liverpool. Um, how do you how do you sort of not have a saver on him? Um, he's very short in the market. I can't take him at the odds, but there's guys like that. Spice, another one that's been really consistent in the Open that, Hasn't been in great form. He's coming back into form now, but even through his form slumps, he still managed to play really well in the Open. So you've got to be careful of the guys this week, particularly that have a history of playing well in the Open. Um, and that's just a little bit of a concern for me with Ram. I know he's playing really well, but his best finish in the Open so far is not even a top 10. I think it's a, an 11. So just a little bit cautious with Ram this week. Okay, so then uh, in the market, who's uh, who's your who's your top pick? 
Uh, well, Louis comes owner? second in on. Yeah, Louis comes second in on my ratings. Um, he's playing extremely well lately. He's he's playing very very well in the majors. Uh, Spieth comes in third. They're both. Spieth's only just over the odds. Um, Louis actually a nice over. Uh, Colin Morikawa is a very big over. This guy has jumped to number four in the world now. I see him being around for a long time. He's got a golf swing and golf game that is going to last, in my opinion, for a very, very long time. Um, and I don't think he's just going to stop at one major. I think he's going to be a player that's going to contend and, and win multiple majors. So uh, they're my top four. Brooks is there about. He's about the right price. Um, he's another guy that you want to have a saver on. He's he's okay in the maid in the British Open. Um, he's had some good performances. Uh, he's playing. He's definitely a big time player with the majors, as we know, as we've spoken about. And Abraham answer is just insane odds this week. I mean, for, for how well he's playing, I know he hasn't really done much in majors yet, but you can't ignore him at the price. I've got him seventh on my list. So he's, uh, I think he's about $120 in the market. So, yeah, I'll be having a small play on him for sure. Is there a little bit of value for Morikawa, given he's a little bit unproven in the European conditions? Have, have bookies perhaps overlooked him and um, other punters overlooked him because most of his form's on American soil? Yeah, we see this with the, the bookmakers a lot. They tend to keep the players short that have had a good history in that event. We see it with Spieth at the Masters. Um, the, the Morikawa, they've let sort of get out, well, not that they've done on purpose, but they haven't protected his price because he hasn't got a history in the open yet to to really get a gauge by. Um, but the players like they they're, going to, they're always going to keep Spee short. They're going to keep McElroy short because they've got a good history in the open and they're, they're a little bit scared of letting them get out. Even though you know McElroy's not at his best, um, he's still playing. He, I mean, his B game's still good enough to to win majors, but. He's not in that scintillating form that we saw around that sort of early part of 2010 to 2014 where he was just unstoppable. Um, but in the open, they do like to, uh, I think, based on their record at that event, they like to like to protect their price a little bit. What do you think about Big Daddy's thoughts there, Top Rope? Uh, you're a week-to-week consumer. You're a glutton for golf betting. Do you uh, agree with his thoughts at the top of the market? Oh, I love Colin Morikawa. He's on top for me as well. Uh, I've got a couple at the top of the board, but Colin Morikawa, I think, is uh, 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 an astounding price, to be honest, considering he's you know, probably the best ball striker in the world. You know, a strong iron game is probably going to be the key to success here, distance control, being able to put it in the right you know, levels, avoid the avoid the runoffs. I think that's going to be so important. I love the fact he played Scotland last week. No worry about his result. He was trying a lot of, a lot of stuff. He missed a lot of short putts last week, and that's probably the big... A big knock on him, but when he has succeeded, the putter has got hot that week. So I don't even think he needs to, you know, I don't even think it needs to be, to, to be white hot for him to go well this week. I just think he needs to, to kind of make the putts he should. Uh, I think conditions will, 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 will really suit. I think he's got that, yeah, as, as Big Daddy said, almost a bulletproof game which is going to stand the test of time. So uh, very keen on, on him. I tend to agree with John Rahm. I can't have him at the price. Uh, I'm not taking single digits about anyone in any golf tournament too perfectly fair at the moment. So uh, with, the, with the depth of these fields, but, you know, he's obviously astonishing. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't have Rory. I know he's got a great history of the tournament here. He's so excited to be back, but I'm just not sure he's playing that well that well this year. Uh, Brooks is obviously – Brooks is bulletproof. My worry with Louis is uh, just his inability to get over the line. He's been absolutely astonishing throughout all the majors this year. Uh, it'd be hard not to have him on, ha- ha- have a ticket on him. But yeah, a bit the same with Tony Finau, who's got more top tens than anyone else since 2018, other than Brooks Kepka in majors. Just doesn't win enough for me. So that, that's my concern with uh, Louis. The other one I'm really kind of looking at, and I know we haven't had an English winner since uh, Sir Nick Fowler in 1992. Uh, I, I really like Tyrrell Hatton this week at, uh, at $29. Look, his form has probably dipped off a little bit compared to what it was kind of six months back. But he's got great links for him. He's won the Alfred Dunhill links twice. He was second there in 2018. He's won the, the, the Dubai Desert Classic, which has kind of a lot of links qualities to it. You know, he, he performed well in the final round of the Scottish Open last week. He's made the top, he's finished top six in two of the last four Open Championships. I, I think Tyrrell Hatton's a, a, a nice bet at the price also. Morikawa and Hatton will be where my dance card kind of centers around this week. 
Mm. Top rope, uh, there's a little bit of an asterisk there. I see the Peter Volandi shirt hanging on your door there, but <laughs> I think if we had a look at your dunny door, the back door of your toilet, you'd have Tyrrell Hatton posters. You seem to tip him every time we have a major, so I'm going to have to pull you up there. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that's a bit rich from the bloke who tipped the guy who's, who, uh, who dressed his dogs up for a, for a wedding uh, for last major. He's talking about Xander Schuffler here. And uh, we heard of we heard from Mike Dogger Caridi. He somehow found Xander, who mm. I'm now saying is a perennial choker. I tried to go with him at last start in the US Open, and I have sacked Xander. I'm. I've had my fingers badly burnt, and I'm, I'm not going to get over that quickly. Speaking <laughs> of uh, people to lay. We might go to you, Big Daddy, first. Who is uh, who's your best lay at the top of the market? Who 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 can't win this tournament? Bryson. Oh wow, well, lines <laughs> up with Dogger Caridi. He knew you'd say that. Hey, yeah, he did say that. What about you, Top Rope? Who's uh, who's your gap job? Yeah, Bryson. I'm fully on board. He can't win this week. He does. He, he does not have a game to to, to suit the conditions. And yeah, this is a you know, open championships are typically won by artistic golfers. You know, golfers who you know, can think of different shots. There is no bigger scientist slash linear <laughs> thinker in the game than, than, than Bryson Ashambo, who's got a new caddy on the bag. You can just see him getting extraordinarily frustrated this week. So uh, I'll be laying Bryson till, till my eyes bleed. Well, a unanimous lay, which yeah. is what we like to see, actually. And he's hero or villain, isn't he, Bryson? He's uh, polarising in the game of golf. All right, let's get to... Uh, Let's get a roughie or two at cricket score odds from uh, from Big Daddy first. We've ho- heard from Dogger Creedy. He's he's specking Keegan Bradley at two hundreds for his best roughie. But uh, Big Daddy, who's who's your best bolter outside the market? Uh, best roughies are Abraham Answer that I just spoke about. Yep. Uh, whether he's whether he's got the game to win, I'm not sure. Jochen Neiman's playing really well. Uh, got into a playoff last week. Um, oh, sorry, the week before, and uh, he's he's coming in around a hundred to one. I've got him fairly high on my list. He comes in about number twelve on my list, so I've got him. He should be about forty dollars, I think. Uh, guys like Berg is over the odds. Corey Connors is insane odds for how good he's playing. Uh, Harris English is big odds. Webb Simpson's big odds. Cameron Smith's got a, a chance. He's getting fairly close to the right price, but he's got a chance. He's probably our best Aussie chance. And Jason Cockrack. Um, he's playing well, and he's insane odds. He's about two hundred to one. So they're my they're my biggest overs this week. And uh, top rope, you're famous. You had uh, Christian Boysen who gave an absolute uh, massive uh, run for it in the U.S. Open. He uh, he faded late, but uh, who's your best bowler, top rope? Yeah, I agree with Daniel Berger. I think he's he's huge overs as well. Lucas Herbert is is going great guns at the moment. Uh, he won the Irish Open a couple of weeks back, and then was a shot out of the playoff last week in the Spoh Show. And I think uh, his big overs absolutely love Sam Burns this week. He might be the pick of the uh, the big odds ones. He's playing really, really well. Love the fact he played Scotland last week. He's got six top twenties this season uh, and got over the line for the first time in the Valspar. Uh From the European Tour, a couple of top players. players. So that Victor Perez, uh, Frenchman who, who who lives in Scotland these days, but. Uh, uh, He's a tremendous iron player, ranked second greens in reg, fourth in strokes mm. and approach on the Euro Tour. And Aaron Wright on the Scottish Open in 2020, admittedly a week in the Scottish Open, but uh, ranked seventh bogey avoidance, tenth in greens in reg, eleventh in scrambling. That's the kind of profile I'll be looking for here. So you can kind of get him around the 250, 300 to one mark. So uh, I think he's a chance, particularly in the kind of top 10, top 20 markets. Just on that, Perez, um, Scoot, that's actually, it hasn't come in on my list as um, one of my top picks, but Perez is a, a player that is an extremely good ball striker. Um, he's got Rory's old caddy. Those top caddies, when they when they get the flick, they have a knack for picking out some of the real good players coming up and through that they want to jump on for a, sort of the long term. And I noticed that he's been on Perez's bag for a while now, so he's obviously got some faith in him. Um, and I've watched him play. He's, he's, he's fairly impressive. Mm, so a couple of uh, nice little roughies you can speculate. You don't have to have much on them, but uh, a cricket score odds, you can get a nice collect. Looking at the top Australian market, uh, we heard from uh, Scotty Hand earlier, and he uh, he was tipping Jason Schreibner to have a big tournament. But at the top of the market here, no surprises. Mark Leishman, 470 Cam Smith, $5. Jason Day, 5 Scott, 6 Herbert, 6 
Min Wu Lee, 9. Matt Jones, 14. And Shrivener is $15. And you get $41 about Brad Kennedy, uh, Lawson, 51. And Pike, Johnny Walter, shout out. He's on the bag for uh, for Aaron Pike. So Johnny Walter from Bet Doctor, he's over at the British Open. So we're filthy mm. uh, jealous here. But uh, Top Rope, talk us through uh, the value in the, uh, the top Aussie market. Yeah, I mentioned him earlier, but I, I love Lucas Herbert this week. I think he's going to have a really, really big tournament. Uh, he just he really thrives on, on, on Lynx Golf. You know, I know the Irish Open wasn't on the Lynx course when he won a couple of weeks ago, but uh, fourth at the Scottish Open last week. Uh, he won the 2020 Dubai Desert Classic, uh, got under the top of Christian Beside and hurt there. Uh, a fourth in the 2020 Scottish Open. He's seventh in the 2018 now for a Dunhill Lynx. Uh, ranked second on the European Tour strokes down putting, third strokes down off the tee. Six putting average, 13th birdie or better, 14th bogey avoidance. I think he's just got a real good game to, to, to suit here. And, you know, I, I, I like his temperament as well. So um, I, I think, you know, I, I, I'd be pretty keen to lay some of those at the top of the market, particularly around the, uh, the, Dave, the Dave Scott Scott name. So, uh, look, I think Cameron Smith can, can get out of the top of him, but Herbert at $6 is the day for me. Okay, interesting analysis there. And... Uh, the tournament head-to-heads, Big Daddy, that's something that uh, is, uh, I guess, famous in your Big Daddy Majors sets that you can get at the Little Birdie Shop. So if you like what you hear from uh, Big Daddy, make sure you check that out. You'll get all of his uh, pre-tournament bets there. What's uh, one matchup that we can uh, focus on for the tournament uh, outrights, Big Daddy? Can we can we find someone to be yeah, no worries. Um, and, and just quickly, just on Herbert, um, Lucas is definitely playing awesome. Um, there's no no question. He's won some good tournaments now. He's in he's in flying form. Um, he's got incredible amount of length. There's there's one little concern that that worries me with Herbert. I mean, he, he can seem to put his way out of trouble. He's an extremely good putter, but under pressure, he's shown a tendency to just hit it completely off the planet. When he won the Irish Open, he he had an unplayable. Should have lost that ball. I don't know how they found it. Um, and then stood up with irons off tee, hitting them way right, missing fairways into deep rough and somehow hacking out of it. He was lucky not to lose two or three balls that round. But if this is a this is a course this week where the rough's going to be penalising. And if he gets loose with his swing, even though he's got the, the, the length, if he suddenly gets loose and gets in contention and starts hitting wides, I mean, he could just rack up some massive numbers. So that's a little bit of concern with me, although he is at a, an attractive price. Um, for, for top Aussies, I think Cam Smith and um, Mark Leishman has sort of grown up in these conditions and shown that he can play well in British Opens. He lost in a playoff when Louis East has won. So and these players tend to have a tendency that if they've grown up in the conditions, they they seem to relish and love playing them. So um, they're Cam Smith, Leishman and, and maybe Herbert at some value, yeah. But uh, in the head-to-heads, mate, I think... Um, Harris English will beat uh, McIntyre. Um, and if you do want another one, um, let me know. I won't say it just yet. All right. Well, yeah, Harris English is $1.82 and Robert McIntyre at two oh one. Uh, and then, yeah, the second one there you liked, was it Morikawa to beat uh, Bryson? Yeah. Yeah, with... Look, Bryson's played a couple of British Opens now, a few British Opens. He's done absolutely nothing. Uh, he'll find it probably even harder this week. Morikawa's number four in the world. He's really consistent. He's got the golf game that should be well suited around this this course. I think Morikawa will beat Bryson. Yeah, I think that's a good bet. Yeah, dollar eighty one. You can get Colin Morikawa. Mark, have you got a uh, a mug tip for the British Open? Are you gonna have a throw at the stumps? No, no. I come in asking about uh, Hatton. Was uh, the one I kind of liked, and I've uh, got backups from Dogger and Top Rope, so and uh, Big Daddy and Top Rope, Tip and Marikawa, so they might be my two I'll follow in the head to head and a couple of these out wide ones. Mm, Marikawa seems unanimous across yeah. the boards. He's he looks like the next big thing in golf, and uh, I did like uh, Handy's insight there with uh, Tommy Fleetwood. I know he went uh, very close last time, and uh, I love his do. His haircut's just absolutely sensational. He's a player that some people find every now and then, but uh, it's been fantastic analysis uh, again. Uh, I'll just run through these boys uh 
best bet. So uh, Big Daddy, uh, he likes Ram and similar to Dogger, he just thinks he's well found in the market. He thinks the value is Louis Ostazen, Spieth and Morikawa. It seems unanimous Morikawa. Abraham Answer is in good enough form to win. The uh, the bulk lay is definitely Bryson Dishan votes. Good to hear everyone against him. Everyone's probably a bit scarred from what happened uh, last time in the US Open. He capitulated in that last round. But uh, good on Bryson for uh, taking the game on. It'd be boring if we didn't have him in it. And the best roughies from Big Daddy was Answer, Neiman, Berger and Connors. Top ropes lined up on uh, Daniel Berger as well. Lucas Herbert is not as a fluke as hope as well. And uh, Sammy Burns, I think Top Rope and uh, Mike Caridi both found him. In the, in the Aussie market, it was uh, Herbert and Schreibner for Hendy. And uh, we just got the uh, the best of uh, Big Daddy's tournament bets. But uh, if you want more analysis from Big Daddy, make sure you head to the Little Birdie Shop. It's going to be uh, fantastic viewing the British Open. It is a cracking tournament. And I think the time slot's even better. It starts yeah. a little bit earlier, doesn't it? Yeah, it's good for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a fantastic time. time. Hmm. So uh, fantastic stuff there. All right, big thanks to you, Top Rope Tedeschi. It's just uh, another week in golf betting, so not much change to your routine. But uh, great uh to have you back on the show, Fraze. I know you've been uh, shooting the lights out, so hopefully you can uh, nail one of these majors. You're getting oh so close uh, to getting a big odds winner here, so who knows who it's going to be. Maybe it's going to be Morikawa or maybe Abraham Ants is going to be uh, the one to win it. But uh, thanks for joining us yet again, and uh, sadly, that's uh, the it for the majors uh, for the end of the year. But uh, big thanks from us at Little Birdie Headquarters. Thanks, Scoot. Thanks, Scooty. Thanks, guys. That's a wrap from okay. us. Uh, a big thanks to punningform.com.au and topsport.com.au for uh, helping us put these shows together. Hopefully, we've found you some value in the golf, and you can pick apart our analysis and uh, try and convert that into bets for you guys at home to get you through the tournament. But uh, that's over and out for us. Can't wait for it, Mark. Yeah, make sure you get on to uh, Big Daddy's uh, updates through the tournament as well. Uh, yeah, good he's, insight, he's, isn't it? Round yeah, by round you get. He's made some good money and just uh, if you're punting in the run, you get uh, three or four cracks at it, obviously, if you bet pre-post going through. Um, so the golf in the run's been massive, especially coming into the last day. So make sure you uh, get the, the latest information. All right, you'll hear about uh, the wash-up on Little Birdie Podcast ne- next week. So make sure you tune into our sports show. But uh, that's a wrap from us. Bye.